In the name of the eternal majesty, the incarnate word, and the abiding spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. Have you ever noticed how God's love turns our world upside down? The gospel reading this morning takes us back to Monday, Thursday, when the disciples gathered together for the Last Supper. It was the servant's job to wash the guest's feet, but there were no servants present and evidently no children who might have been compelled to perform the task of washing their feet. None of the disciples was willing to volunteer for such a lowly or a humble job. So Jesus' love turns their world upside down by changing roles from teacher to servant. He wraps a towel around his waist and gets down on the floor so that he can wash his friend's feet. Those of you who were here on Monday, Thursday saw this demonstrated by Father David and Father Andrew. On that first Monday, Thursday, impetuous Peter sort of gets what Jesus is doing and wants Jesus to give him a bath. In today's reading, supper is now over. And Jesus tells the disciples and tells us that it is by this kind of humble service that God is glorified. So in order that God might be glorified, Jesus gives us a new commandment that we love one another. Just as Jesus has loved us, we should love one another. In Jesus, we have seen what it means to love one another. And Jesus has made love the defining characteristic of his followers. Jesus has shown that at the core of God's glory are deeds of love. By this love, everyone will know that we are Jesus' disciples if we have love for one another. In this new commandment, God's love turns the world upside down. In the first reading, Peter is caught between the old purity requirements and God's new verdict on what is clean. Lest we make too much of the distinction between them and us, we must look at our own code of who is unclean. Those who are not like us in the dominant culture, whether they are black, Mexican, Muslim, atheist, illegal immigrant, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, poor, aging, ill, blue, or red. All those who don't meet our expectations. Do we exclude them because of the law? Or do we include them in in accordance with the gospel? The saving message is that there are no distinctions All are clean, and thus all are welcome. That is playing itself out in the Anglican Communion, particularly between the global South and North America. Some bishops have refused to participate in communion with other bishops because of disagreements over interpretation of Scripture and the role of all women and gay men in the church. But our presiding bishop, Catherine Jeffert Shorey, in the spirit of Peter, has welcomed everyone to commune and pray with us because God's love turns the world upside down. 